it's Ryan. Welcome back to How Farms Work. Today we are in the Bobcat at the main farm and we are going to be pulling out the feed mill. Travis and I just set up the jump auger to the small 2,000 bushel grain bin with my corn in it because I want to put the creep feeder in with my calves in the steer lot and oh boy, bright lights. That's just not any tractor. Um, so I want to put up the creep feeder in with my calves. I've been feeding them buckets and um, it's about time that I get them on a feeder and use the feed mill to crack the corn. Um, that way it's processed, the cows can, the calves can utilize more of that energy that's in the corn and um, hopefully help them grow a little bit faster. So the feed mill is right in front of me. We are going to be, we are going to be using a tractor that is on the farm that is in place of the 7600 because the 7600 was in for repair up at Sloan's. Uh, it had a whole bunch of issues with it. So we've got a temp tractor and it is a 6195R. So we've been using that in place of the 7600. We were without it for a while, but um, since this is here, Travis and I just looked at the PTO. It had the thousand in it. Um, we just pulled it out and flipped it around and put the 540 on it, which is what the feed mill has. tractor's quiet. So we're up in this 6R right now, um, making Travis do all the dirty work. Um, I just closed the back window so it didn't get dusty in here. So the 6R is on the farm for the time being because the 7600 has had some work that's been needed done to it. Um, Travis knows more about it. I haven't really been getting into it too much. Um, if you want to go over to the rest of the story, check it out. He'll talk about the 76 more and what's going on with it. Um, but in the meantime, Sloan sent us down the 6R and it has a loader on it. Um, although they didn't have any like hay attachments for the front, so we can like use forks to load bales with or anything, uh, anything like that we can't do. So, um, yeah, this is a 6195R and pretty standard cab for a 6R. Now this is the Green Star 4 display. Um, it's a generation after the Green Star 3 in the 8235R. So it's a little bit more advanced, a little bit more intuitive than the one that we've got. The screen's larger, better colors, um, displays more information right up front. So the difference between like a 6M and a 6R is that the 6M is not gonna have this screen. Um, I'm not even totally sure if it might be an option, um, but with the 6Rs, the screen, screen comes standard. So here we've got our loader control So it's got an IVT transmission in it. Um, I have driven a tractor with IVT. If you guys wanna go check that video out up in the card up here. But we're just having this thing until we get the 7600 back and I figured might as well hop, hop up into it and kind of look around. Ah, huh. bird poop. So right now what we're doing with the feed mill is that Travis is vacuuming out the hammer mill on it because the last time we used this, we filled it with we filled it up with a bunch of nasty corn, and I'm gonna guess that the mice, birds, whatever else were pulling the corn, whatever was left on the inside. Um, we had we had emptied it out, um, but some of that stuff, you know, they can knock loose and pull back in to the hammer mill, and I, I would assume that's what happened. So we're gonna go ahead and give her a spin and hope she starts up. And we don't break a pin or anything.
remember everybody, overkill is underrated. I've got to set this for continuous flow. There. Now I put it in the detent. It's going to flow continuously, which is what we need. Do you want the handle on it or not? Yeah. Now we've got this filled. Um, in the morning, we're going to take this out. Uh, we have yet to set up the creek feeder in the steer lot. Um, I'll do that tomorrow morning, and then we'll take this out there and fill it up. So I really don't know when this thing is going back or anything like that. It really just depends on how long Sloan's takes work on the 76. So I don't know if this is going to be the only video where we use this thing or not. Um, I would talk more about it, but in, in, in a nutshell, I mean, a lot of these tractors, a lot of the R-series, um, like the 6Rs, the 7Rs, the 8Rs, a lot of them are all alike. Um, I've talked about 6Rs before, so I could go through and walk you guys around and know everything, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, pretty much the only thing that is really different from any of the other tractors is the fact that the Green Star display has so much more information on it um, and it says SCV8 okay I wonder if that's for the loader then yep huh. so it's got four SCVs on the back of the tractor three-point control right there Other than that, I mean, all these controls are pretty basic. You can set up certain um, actions here, I think within the monitor. So if you want to set any quick tasks, you can just press those buttons um, if you want it to automatically pick up an implement or whatever. So, looks like Travis is heading out. Otherwise, I mean, it seems like a pretty good tractor. I'm really a fan of the IVT transmissions. Um, I think they are just the bee's knees. Um, so long as you know they work properly um, at first they really had a lot of issues with them but I guess in recent years they've ironed them out um, and from what I've used them they are really nice to use this tractor has 660 hours on it it's still a brand new tractor there we go well, this tractor does have death that pretty much sums up today I'll see you guys in the morning. Now it's time to feed the cows. Um, it's after dark now, but cows needed to bail. Didn't get out here in time to do it during the day. But uh, 
So you can hear they're a little hungry. Now, feeding out here is a little difficult by myself because it's hard opening the gate and then running up to the skid loader and then getting in it, driving through the gate and then shutting it right behind me as fast as I can because when they're hungry, they're hungry and they will walk through the gate. And the way I have to pick up the gate, I can't just um, move it with the skid loader or anything like that. I, that I have to get out. So I walked over to the, the bale feeder here it was down the barnyard. I picked it up on its side and I pretty much walked up like a hamster wheel. <laughs> and I got it up here along this gate up by the milk house. And I'm hoping that if I feed them up here, I can reach across the gate with the JCB. And then um, I can do it myself. I can just cut the bait, cut the bale on this side of the fence and then um, drop it over. So I'm going to drop in a bale in here for tonight. And we're going to see if they push it away from the gate. Um, I put it right up against the gate. Hopefully they don't push against it, but I don't think it's going to be going anywhere. So I'm going to go back up to the JCB and drop the bale in. Oh boy, are they eagerly waiting. this thing so much. Travis brought the 6R with the feed mill out to my place and I just hopped in the JCB. We're letting it warm up. I'm gonna hook on to the equipment mover. We are going to go down and hook up to the creep feeder and we're gonna place it out in the steer lot and then we're gonna pull down in there and load it with the 6R. any more incidents.
I accidentally filled it a little too full. So this should last them at least a week, probably a week and a half or more. So I'll be checking it on it. Now, I'm not sure if I should move the gates up at all. Um, for the first day, I'm probably gonna keep it kind of tight. And then tomorrow I'll come out and see how much they've been get, getting out of it. Because, <laughs> I mean, they can get to the corn. That's not an issue, they just gotta lick at it. So I eventually like to have the gates unrestricting the corn flow but I just want to kind of ease them into this just in case there are any that for some reason go bonkers and park themselves under this thing and just don't stop eating, you know? So he's going to pull out with the tractor. I'm going to shut the lid on this. thing actual feelings I like it I'd like it a lot more if the tires were wider it's set up too narrow for narrow rows and for how high the tractor sits it just seems like you're getting a lot more of this rocking motion and especially when you're going through snow and drifts and uneven ground it just feels like you're gonna take it right on over now this thing has the suspended front end so it has a pretty smooth ride yeah, I'm not saying that it is that it's rough or anything. It's, just, yeah. it's got the IVT transmission in it, which I have said numerous times. If you're going to have a road runner, that's what I would actually like to have. Mm -hmm. It's something that easier on fuel. And don't get me wrong, there's a learning curve. And even for me, the last IVT tractor we had on the farm was that 7930 we demoed, and that was back in 12. I think. I think that 80, I think that 8R that we demoed Sloan's had IVT in it. Don't oh, quote me on that. Oh, that 8370? Yeah. That's true. But to be fair, I didn't really run it. Well, um, I guess I drove it back. One of those tractors had it on it, plus the New Holland. CVT. Basically the same thing. Yeah. I like it. Once you, you just gotta get used to how it, how it handles. Oh, big buddy. Done that a time or two. Travis is leaving to go get a load of hay and bringing it back to here. Uh, he's probably going to take it to go sell at some point, but uh, he's going to bring it back up to the main farm on the bale carrier. So um, that's a one person job. And I'm going to go home and do some stuff on the computer like taxes and all that other fun stuff that you got to do every January, February. Now that we got my calves all fed, they should be good for about another week or so uh, before they need any more corn. Now, I will be attending the National Farm Machinery Show on February 12th, 13th, and 14th. This is the last call. So if you guys are down at the show, be sure to swing into the Unverfirth booth in the West Wing, uh, either Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday during the show. And I will be there 11 a.m. to noon. So if you guys are interested in winning a How Farms Work hoodie in a raffle that I'm doing for charity, uh, be sure to swing into the booth and get your entry signed up. Um, I will be, I don't know what it's going to be, maybe like $5 for an entry and you can put in as many entries as you want. Um, if there's only five entries, then everybody's going to win. 
But um, this was a special ordered hoodie that I made. And these are like super, super comfortable. And um, they ran at about 40 bucks a pop. Um, I don't have too many blue How Farms Work hoodies out there. So uh, this will be your special chance if you're at the show to get a How Farms Work hoodie. Um, all of us at the farm have one of these and um, they are super comfortable. So also what I'll be raffling off is probably like a couple hats as well. But I will also be raffling off the shirt that I had signed by all of us that were on the Farmer to Farmer YouTube panel in Omaha in early December. So again, if you're at the show, be sure to swing into the How Farms work booth. Uh, bring five bucks with you. It'll get you an entry to win this hoodie or a sweatshirt or another sweatshirt, shirt, um, or hat, or whatever I take down to the show to raffle off. So I'll be at the show. If you are, I hope to see you there. 11 to noon. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Anyway, I'll see you next time, guys. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat, all how farmers work, and be sure to stay tuned on our Facebook and Snapchat stories as we are at the show and I walk around. Um, I'll probably be live streaming at one point or another, so be sure to watch out this coming week as I attend National Farm Machinery Show in Louisville, Kentucky. See you then, guys.